and welcome to topic three, predicting redox reaction in solution. So previously we had talked about um, re how, what redox reactions are. Today we're going to look at them in solution. In solutions, molecules and ions behave independently of each other. A first step in predicting redox reactions is to list all the entities that are present. So on table six on the right here, it outlines us a few hints for listing and labeling entities. So aqueous solutions contain H2O molecules. That will be important. Acidic solutions contain H plus ions. Um, basic solutions contain OH minus ions. Some oxidizing and reducing agents are combinations. For example, MnO4 minus and H plus aqueous. H2O liquid, Fe2 plus, Cu plus, Sn2 plus, and Cr2 plus may act as either oxidizing or reducing agent. Label both possibilities in your list. All right, so as we said, a first step in predicting redox reactions is to list all entities that are present. Our first example is copper is placed into an acidic potassium permanganate solution. All right, let's list what we have. We know this is copper. Is this copper here aqueous or solid? It would be solid. So we would write this down as Cu solid. And it says it's placed in an acidic potassium permanganate solution. So acidic means there it is H plus. And this is there's potassium, which is K plus. Potassium permanganate is a purple solution. And what happens with it is that when it gets onto your skin, it will leave a brown residue for several days. It kind of looks like peanut butter. It also looks like poop, so kind of gross. All right, we have K plus. And then permanganate is MnO4 minus. Uh, one thing I should note is that H plus is aqueous. K plus is aqueous. MnO4 is aqueous. And then what is the one other thing we would have in this solution? We need to remember our water. So this is H2O. It is a liquid. And now what we need to do is we need to figure out whether these are oxidizing agents, reducing agents, or both. All right. Let's start with water here. Water can act as an oxidizing agent or a reducing agent. I'm going to hop on to K+. Plus. K plus is an ion, and it is a cation, which means it is an oxidizing agent. We have copper, which is a reducing agent. And we also have H plus as an OA and MnO4 as an OA. So OA, OA. When you check your table, what you will find is that there's a tie, a draw between H plus and MnO4 for your strongest oxidizing agent. That is because they are actually both required in the half reactions of the redox reaction. And what we find also too is that our copper solid is our strongest reducing agent. Oops, I'll leave that there just so you can take a look there. All right. Now I kind of skipped over this. We'll go over the steps of what I did there. The following instructions allow you to make the correct and most efficient use of a redox table. Choose the strongest oxidizing agent present in your mixture by starting at the top left corner of a redox table and going down the list until you find the oxidizing agent that is in your mixture. Choose the strongest reducing agent in your mixture by starting at the bottom right corner of the table and going up the list until you find the reducing agent that is in your mixture. Read reduction half reaction equations from left to right following the forward arrow. Read oxidation half reaction equations from right to left. So we'll just put a highlighter here. We're going to highlight oxidation from right to left. And reduction is left to right. All right. Assume that any substances not present in the table are spectator ions. You do not need to label or consider these substances. All right. What we find in my data table is that there is a reaction there 
which is, let me just see here. I should be able to move this. Yes, I just want to extend my page a bit here. All right. There's a reaction there of MnO4 minus aqueous plus 8H plus plus five electrons to produce Mn2 plus 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 four oops four h2o liquid the other reaction we have is with a copper which is cu s produces cu2 plus aqueous plus two electrons and then what do I do to find my net reaction? Find my common factor on the second one's brackets, first one brackets. On the first one, five electrons, five electrons and two electrons are common factors 10. So I'll multiply the top one by two, the bottom one by five. And then what we get is, here I'll end it with this. This we get MnO4 minus, which is aqueous. Make sure to put a two because I multiplied it by two. And then plus our two times eight, which is 16 H plus. And then what else is in my second? So let's just put a one here for two, one, two, and then we'll just put net below. Okay, I have 16 H pluses. And then what else do I have on the left-hand side in number two? I have copper solid. How many? One times five is going to be five. CU solid. All right. This reacts and we get two MN two plus aqueous plus. Oh, that's a messy plus, but it'll work. Plus eight H2Os which are liquid plus five Cu two plus aqueous. All right, that is all we have to do there. All right, I'm gonna stop this here. I'm gonna pull up our data sheet so that way we can refer back to that and see what, where some of these um, reactions came from.